Welcome to Digital Asset News. I get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, pretty interesting stuff. First up, Bitcoin maximalists will be on the wrong side of history, says Vitalik Buterin. And this one uh, gets a little crazy with uh, certain people accusing Ethereum and Cardano in the same league with BitConnect. Also, XRP prices are jeopardized as Ripple continues to flood the market. And depending on your view, this could be a FUD piece or pretty accurate. And we'll go a little bit deep into it, but I'm going to ask you to keep an open mind. Also, and this one is important because it talks about SIM swap attacks. So Scott Melker, uh, he's also known as the Wolf of All Streets, uh, pretty uh, prolific trader. He recounts how he fell victim to a SIM swap attack. And if it can happen to this guy, it can happen to anybody. Also, this is day two of our $100 Ethereum giveaway just for uh, using or signing up for unstoppable domains. All you got to do is uh, put a comment in the section and we'll go over that at the very end as well as scam of the day. So before we get into that, let's take a look at the market. So today it is August 6th, I believe, one o'clock PM Texas time. And uh, let's see what we got going on. So Bitcoin almost at 12,000. I like to see that. I think everybody does. Doesn't matter if you're an altcoin person or whatever else. Bitcoin kind of carries the whole thing right now. So we're up 1.6%, 7% for the week almost. Ethereum, uh, just teetering on that $400. XRP, 30 cents, watch out. Tether is Tether. Bitcoin Cash, sure. Cardano up a little bit. Bitcoin SV, again, don't know why it's in the top 10, but here we are. Litecoin and Chainlink um, going against all the FUD and uh, hitting all-time highs. I can't uh, imagine that it went up this high this fast. Um, I would kind of be surprised if it doesn't hit $10, but I mean, look, what goes up must come down. Do not FOMO into this project. Do not FOMO. The first rule of cryptocurrency and digital assets is you do not FOMO. So uh, just look at it, uh, take your spot, maybe do a little dollar cost average and off you go. And then everything else is pretty up. Oh, Tesla's up 5%. That's weird. Uh, 5.6 and a uh, pretty good day. So let's jump into the article, huh? So first up, Bitcoin maximalists, we're on the wrong side of history. So Buterin calling out everybody, shots fired, but it was in actuality, uh, shots fired at him first off. So Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin has taken a swipe at Blockstream CEO Adam Back. I thought his name was Black, Adam Back, okay. After he compared his brainchild to some of the best known Ponzi schemes and con actors. So look, I mean, if someone's gonna call you a scam artist and compare you to Bernie Madoff and BitConnect, uh, you have to take a swipe back. Are you kidding me? I mean, uh, I mean, he's got to do it, right? If, if not, uh, what's the whole point? So uh, we're going to get into what actually happened. But, uh, you know, hey, Vitalik, good for you. And also good for Charles Hoskinson for what he said. So moving on, tired old propaganda. There you talk about Vitalik, uh, claims that this tired old propaganda that is being spread by maximalists is becoming less and less effective. And I got to tell you, I was listening to uh, Ivan on Tech a couple days ago. He was talking about Ethereum turning five, and he has been around uh, a pretty long time. And he said that when Ethereum came out, uh, all the maximalists said, "You know what that's for? It's to uh, steal your Bitcoin because you're gonna you're gonna dump your money into that, and that's the only point of it. That's it's just a scam, and there's nothing ever good, and da 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 da. Which is kind of weird because there was an article uh, I saw this from uh, CryptoLark, and he talked about. Uh, this was back in August 22nd, 2019. Bitcoin maximalists embrace Ethereum after receiving an offer they can't refuse. A group of hardcore Bitcoin maxis have heroically overcome their, that's funny, heroically overcome their hatred for Ethereum after receiving ERC20 shares in crypto exchange INX worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm not going to keep going on, but you get the point. So really, you have to take a look at what is going on behind the scenes. It's not what they say. It's what they do. Remember that for everybody every kind of investor, every bank, every person that you come across. It's not what they say, it is what they do. And uh, that does not look good for somebody talking about uh, as far as frauds. So moving on, in a series of caustic tweets, it's a good one, back uh, compared Ethereum, Cardano, Ripple to infamous Italian con artist, Charles Ponzi, who ended up becoming the namesake of every fraudulent scheme that pays profits to earlier investors by luring in fresh money. So what exactly did he say? Well, let's take a look. So this was actually started by uh, Leia Hilpern. Uh, I've seen her around. Uh, looks like she's pretty prolific in the Twitter space. And she says, imagine not liking someone because they prefer a different coin to you. Say a lot, I can't stop laughing. And Adam back here, who is the co-founder of Blockstream states, well, imagine not liking Charles Ponzi because he liked his own coin, not laughing somehow. So essentially he's comparing every type of altcoin to a Ponzi scheme. And then 
he comes back and just says this. BitConnect, Charles Ponzi, Ethereum, OneCoin, Cardano, Ripple, Bernie Madoff, Stellar, Dan Lerma. <laughs> Getting them all in there. All looking very similar grade to me. Ponzi scheme. And, uh, you know, everybody's got their own opinion. And now here's the thing. I'm not a, uh, a Bitcoin maximalist or Ethereum maximalist or a tomato coin maximalist or whatever. I, I don't really care. I just care that this whole space in some way, shape or form goes up and increases in value. That's all I care about. When the water comes into the harbor, all the ships rise. So if there is some coin that is going up massively, like Litecoin, I don't know. I don't own Litecoin, but I've covered it. I'm like, great. It's going up. Fantastic. Now, Mind you, Bitcoin SV and Bitcoin Cash kind of leery on, so I'm not really a big fan of those, but everything else, I could care less. So with these types of things, I feel like it's kind of got to kind of stop at some point because if you have investors from the outside looking in, it looks very juvenile, uh, but that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments section. But I did post this. Let me blow it up. This is uh, from Trace Mayer. If you don't know Trace Mayer, he is a uh, Bitcoin maximalist and OG back in the space before Bitcoin was Bitcoin. And he states this, Bitcoin doesn't need to satisfy all the needs for all the people. Sometimes you want a knife, sometimes you want a fork, sometimes you want both of them, both of them together. So we have to keep an open mind. And that's why I invest in what I invest into. So I invest in a Bitcoin because I think it's going to be a store of value, just like I think it's digital gold. I don't think it's going to be currency. That's just how I see it. Ethereum, I think it's built on Ethereum, especially DeFi and smart contracts. So that's why I invest in Ethereum. Cardano, Tezos, uh, those are also smart contracts. So if, uh, an EOS as well. So if Ethereum doesn't make it, well, I got my backups. And then for Chainlink, I invested in Chainlink a while ago because I knew that you're going to need data to be pulled in from outside sources, and that is what Chainlink does. And I always talk about this. It's like uh, the prospectors for the gold rush in the 1800s. The gold rush people didn't get rich. They just got out there, and some of them, maybe 5 10% got rich. The ones that got rich were the people that actually provided the supplies and services to these prospectors. You need, you need a pickaxe? You need you know, a pan, I got that, buy it from me. Same thing with Chainlink. We're not gonna do smart contracts, but we'll pull the, all the API data that you need. So that's why I have Chainlink. And then XRP and uh, Stellar, uh, I feel like there's going to be a massive need for uh, remittance payments. And depending if you wanna go XRP, which is more, you know, uh, towards like the banks or Stellar, which is more towards the bank, the unbanked. I don't know. So I hedged my bet and that's why I invested in them. And then also VeChain. I did that because I have a, an Amazon business. And I got to tell you, every single time I ship something in, they screw me over because every time I send something in, it's not being tracked like, hey, I sent in a, a thousand units. What happened? Well, we only we only scanned 940. So, so you lost 60. With Chainlink, you can you can definitely track all those different types of things. Also for counterfeit, counterfeit food, counterfeit baby formula, counterfeit Nikes, everything else, especially out of China. So that is great. And that's why I invested all those things. So lastly, to finish this up, it said these comparisons didn't sit well with uh, CEO and Cardano founder Charles Hoskinson. He slammed this attempt to bash this project as sad and pathetic. Look, uh, let, let anybody say what they want to say. Just do your thing and be successful. And that's the best revenge. All right, let's move on. XRP price jeopardized as Ripple continues flooding market. Uh, and again, as an XRP investor, these are always interesting to me. And before we start to talk about this is a FUD article and this and this, hey, you have to look at the data that, that you're presented with, right? Get the information, then make a decision. So XRP sales spike. Ripple made headlines after revealing in its Q2 2020 markets that it continues to flood. Okay, wording, sure. How about this? Increase the amount of XRP. Let's just say that. Although the U.S.-based uh, technology company had dramatically reduced the sale of its tokens in Q1, it appears to be back at it. Ripple sold approximately 32.6 million to institutional investors Q2, which is a almost a 2,000% increase. Why? According to Ripple, the significant spike in sales is partially due to the growing adoption that the cross-border remittances tokens have experiences experienced and its integration in different markets. They state, the development of liquid and robust, robust markets is key to the success of ODL. The second quarter of 2020 saw numerous integrations that helped contribute to the health of XRP markets, reads the report. So let me ask you, what do you think about that? Um, because to me, when I read this, I see both sides. 
I see, and this has always been the complaint about XRP and Ripple. They're dumping out of the market, or they're flooding the market, or they're putting a lot of XRP in the market and it's being gobbled up, and it reduces the price. On the other side, people are saying, well, they have to because they need liquidity in the market because things are going off so great. I got to tell you, there are so many positive articles about XRP and Ripple, yet here's the price, and here's what it is. So I will just say this. I, I have XRP, I hold XRP. And because I'm so damn stubborn, I won't let go of it. And I know there's people out there going, you need to let go, you need to let go and, and put into some other project. I'm not, I'm gonna go down with the ship because I'm an investor. I'm not, I have a plan of action. And if, if it screws up, it screws up, but I, I do what I say I'm gonna do and that's it. So uh, if it goes down, hey, uh, I, will, I will let it go. The other uh, buys that I have, I think will more than make up for it. Um, I just have to follow my plan. And whatever your plan is, is your plan. That's just how I see it. So finishing up this article, this is from Dino Ibisbigovic, head of content and SEO at Sentiment. I think I nailed that name. On average, the moment cryptocurrencies show up on this list, the dump begins. In the second week since appearing on the emerging trends list, the coins we back tested have on average lost a massive 8% of our total price. And this is a sample of 200 coins. And of course, they're talking about Ripple. So they're saying when it starts to show up on these specific lists and all the investors are starting to take a huge notice into them and not in a positive way, you'll see a tumble 8% on average. So uh, I'm not going to go to the rest of this because after this, it's all astrology, uh, which is TA. And not that TA is bad. I just don't understand it. I'm just not smart enough. You guys are smarter than me. That's all I'll say. So there is mention down there that 28 cents is the support level, but um, it remains to be seen. However, if you're somebody like uh, Peter Brandt, uh, the trader who always talks smack about XRP, he states it's going to near zero. So I, like I said, I hold it. Uh, I'm nervous about it, but I am cautiously optimistic and we will see. And let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece. So next up, and I this was really interesting because it shows me that I'm doing things wrong. Uh, Scott Melker, Wolf of, Wolf of uh, All Streets, recounts how he fell victim to a sim swap attack. So uh, I saw this and I'm like, hmm, if this guy, you know, gets attacked and he's huge in the cryptocurrency, what hope do we all have? Well, he's going to explain how to not fall victim. So Scott Melker, Wolf of Wall St All Streets, says he was victim of a sim attack in February, but managed to avoid losing any crypto assets. And he's going to tell you how. So on an August 4th post on Melker's website, and if you haven't seen it, it's a pretty slick website. Uh, I'll link in the comment section or the description, just the wolf of all streets.io, and it goes over pretty lengthy stuff. So let's just read the highlights, huh? Uh, he said he was able to protect access to his bank accounts, credit cards, and crypto exchanges after a hacker assumed his identity by tricking his phone carrier and diverted Melker's communications to the hacker's phone. So we always hear about it, you know, like this happens, this happens, but this is a high profile case. So uh, I tend to take notice more often. Uh, during those times. According to Melker, hacker had access to his number and text messages, which would give have given them access to all his funds if, and this is the big thing, if he'd relied on two-factor authentication or 2FA delivered via text message. However, he used the Google Authenticator or Authy. He he used Google Authenticator, which was kept on a and this this is the big thing, which kept was kept on a separate offline device and he said this is the single thing that largely saved me from the most damage said milker and just to be sure i looked this up and it, i asked the, it was a question how does the google authenticator app for android work offline same thing with ios it says google authenticator doesn't require any internet or mobile connection the system generates the secret key 1632 character code and the code is scanned and you don't need to be online so here's the thing about google authenticator though i have it on my phone uh, I'm thinking I should, after this story, get it off. But the thing is, you can only use it on mobile devices. So I can't put this on my laptop. I can't use it on my tablet that I know of. So I have to get like a separate phone to keep it over there, which might be worth it. I mean, if, especially for you, for you guys who have like, you know, you know, tens of thousands of dollars in cryptocurrency. Well, uh, actually, that is me too. So I need to do that. So moving on, he states, even with my logins and passwords, they were unable to access my 2FA. This gave me enough time to contact my banks, credit cards, exchanges, and have my accounts locked. And I got to tell you right now, there's a couple of accounts that I am using text messages. And the, 
that wallets even warn me on my phone, hey, we noticed that you're not using Google Authenticator or 2FA. Please switch to 2FA. And I'm like, I'll get to it at some point. So uh, I'll be doing that uh, before I release this video. So lastly, states never use uh, text message verification as part of your two-factor authentication. Hackers are counting on this vulnerability in a SIM swap attack. 2FA is a double-edged sword. It offers protection when used correctly on a separate device, but allows easy access to everything if it is simply a text message on your phone because the hacker will receive your texts and calls. So that's all I got. Um, I think it's uh, very important. Uh, I'm going to do this, and it's up to you to do it, but i got to tell you, uh, that scares the hell out of me when I read something like that. All right, let's give away some money. So this is what's going on. Unstoppable Domains, if you don't know, they just put out a new release. Two things. First of all, Coinbase, if you start sign up for Unstoppable Domains, like I have my Unstoppable Domain, and it looks like this, it's in the description of every one of my videos, and it's just danlikes.crypto. And what's great about that is now, if you go to Coinbase or Huobi, uh, if you use Huobi, uh, you can just put in, and instead of putting this long number, this long uh, public address like th this one right here, uh, which no one can remember, uh, you just put in danlikes.crypto uh, and send me 10 bucks. I mean, don't send me any money. I don't, I'm good. So, but if you were, if you were somebody like, hey, send me some money, you can just use danlikes.crypto, uh, put it in the um, uh, Bitcoin or actually, sorry, Ethereum. Uh, address and it will just send it to me. So instead of using these unreadable things, uh, now we got these nice Dan likes that crypto. And here's another thing about unstoppable domains. And I, I keep harping on it. This is the second day. We're gonna talk about it tomorrow too. But uh, what's cool about this is that I was around when the internet came about. I'm old, okay. And I remember when everybody bought up uh, websites like crazy. They bought up pets.com. They bought up uh, you know uh, Mr. Smith.com. Uh, jamesandrewstreet.com and everything you can think of and every kind of business and then later on casper.com and every and what would happen is they wait for years and then people like can i buy your 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 domain no can i buy your domain they wait years and years and years and casper.com was just sold i don't know how many years ago but for millions of dollars that guy bought it for 10 bucks waited like eight years and just sold it off for I mean, amazing right because casper.com which is the betting company wanted that name and it worked out great so i mean same thing as crypto.com they paid a lot of money for that one so but here all the dot coms are gone but if you go to uh unstoppable domains you can get cool stuff like you know dan likes dot crypto dan peaches dot crypto dan whatever or you know give me crypt give me dot crypto uh, i that probably is taken but uh, you know what i mean so that's that's a good thing and then also you can do this so Here's the daily for the giveaway. It's $100 in Ethereum, and all you got to do is just in the comment section say ETH to 10K, and then you have to leave your uh, your dot crypto domain. You can't put in your Ethereum long address. You can't put in this as your address. It has to be a dot crypto address, and then we'll pick them at random, and we will give away. So yesterday's winner already got their money. And the winner is uh, wabisabi.crypto. So here is Unstoppable Domains, giving them $100 in Ethereum. And that's how it is. That's super easy, right? Let me, let me show that again. Nine seconds. All you got to do is put in wabisabi.crypto in uh, Coinbase. And there it is. Stick out $100 and uh, send. I guess I got a face ID. Good for them. And off you go. So uh, pretty awesome, pretty simple instead of using those long characters. So I'm going to go over a couple of things today. That's how you win. But I need to make mention of like, there is the question of the day, which we're going to go over right now. But I'm going to go over the question of the day, which has to do with unstoppable domains and their wallets, how to connect your wallet uh, to your Bitcoin, Ethereum, potato foot coin, whatever uh, different cryptocurrency you have to your unstoppable domain address. So let's do that right now. Okay, everybody, and welcome back to the office. So uh, for the question today, we've got this coming from Ron Van Jant. And Ron asks, uh, thanks for the info. What a guy. Uh, he talks about uh, the Tom Emmer. And he states, if I, I'm interested in the unstoppable domain thing, maybe someone could help me out, please. If I have my name and transferred my coins, is that as safe as other soft wallets? I'm using the Atomic wallet and love it. And where do I find my wallet? Is that in the unstoppable domain platform? I'm not a very computer savvy person. So uh, first of all, Ron, uh, it's okay because a lot of people aren't really computer savvy. Uh, that's just how it goes. So what we're going to do is I'm going to bring in uh, Zay from Unstoppable Domains and she's going to answer this question directly. 
uh, and then we're gonna go over uh, how to actually uh, create a wallet in the Brave browser. So let's uh, get Zay in here. Cool, so Zazi, thanks so much for uh, just jumping in. Just real quick, so here's the question from Ron, uh, as you remember that we talked about. And he talks about, I'm interested in Stopple Domains, maybe someone can help me out. Uh, if I have my name and transferred my coins, is that as safe as any other soft wallet? I'm using the Atomic and love it. And where do I find my wallet? Is that in the Unstoppable Domains platform? I'm not very savvy. So, Zaji, what's going on here? Yeah, no, no problem. And that's okay if you're not quite sure what's going on. I'm happy to help and answer that question. So, basically, Unstoppable Domains is a blockchain domain registrar. So we are kind of like a domain provider. So we do not provide wallets or any sort of assets like that. The only thing we can provide for you is the .crypto domain or .zil domain that you purchase from us. So when you go to our site, you can search for the domain you want, you can purchase it. And then the only time that wallets come into play are to claim the domain because it acts as an NFT ERC 720 wallet, um, or sorry, asset. And so you have to store it somewhere. So that has to be stored in a wallet. So that's one point where a wallet comes into play is for storing the domain. And the second point where a wallet comes into play is adding the cryptocurrency address from a wallet to your domain so that people can pay you to that address. So those are the only two reasons that a wallet would be involved, but we do not provide wallets and those are all from third parties and then you integrate that on the platform. So I'm sure Rob will show you how to do that. Got it. So Zaji, just to make it simplified, uh, Unstoppable Domains is like uh, the GoDaddy of blockchain. Can we say that? Yeah. Yeah, so you can go to our site and you can search for domains and you can buy the domains there. And after that, everything else that comes into play is bringing in third parties to help you make that happen. Cool. Okay, let's jump in. So thanks, Zaji. I really appreciate it. Let's jump into my computer. I'm going to show these guys how to create a wallet in Brave Browser, how to link it to Unstoppable Domains to make it simple. Thanks. Sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so let's do this. Let's make it super simple. Uh, if you have the Brave Browser, which... Um, I use all the time, it's fantastic. No, none of those uh, pesky ads and things like that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a um, wallet in the Brave browser, which is pretty cool. Now, I wanna make mention here, don't keep all your crypto on a hot wallet like the Brave wallet or, what, or the you know, Ethereum wallet. Uh, put it in somewhere where it can be safe, like an Anna Ledger or someplace where you control the keys. Don't keep everything online. That's a recipe for disaster. So. First of all, let's just set this up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the words Brave on the, in the browser, and there's a Preferences button right here. Click on that. And now we're gonna have a bunch of stuff right here. But at the top, Settings, Brave Rewards, History Book, Mark Downs, Crypto Wallets, we're gonna click on that. Now, mine is already set up. Uh, so your, your setup will, uh, will initially look very different. But the big thing is, is that you're gonna click on an account somewhere. And it usually looks like this. So what I'm gonna do right here is we're gonna, and you have your options here. You're gonna create an account, import an account, or connect a hardware wallet. So if you have a Nano, you can connect to that, which is pretty cool. But let's just do this. Uh, let's do create account. And I'm gonna count, call this originally account three uh, because I'm not very creative. And I'm gonna click on create. And there we are. So that's pretty much it. Pretty awesome, right? Uh, so we are done. This, this, is, this is our cryptocurrency wallet. And if you notice that you have Ethereum here, you have BAT as the default. Uh, here is your, your address. So if you want to take this, you're just going to click on the copy to clipboard. And then we're going to go over to uh, Unstoppable Domains. And we're going to find the crypto domain that we have. We're going to click on Manage. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in our, our address right there. So I'm not going to put it in there because it's already there. So that's my Ethereum address. You're just going to uh, copy and paste. Now, again, you can select additional currencies right here. Uh, Cardano, Atom, Bound, blah, 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 blah. A ton of other stuff that you want, right? I can put in one and then just put in my whatever one is. I don't know what that is. And that's your address. So what's great about this is that your name, so mine is danlikes.crypto. You can have all your crypto wallet addresses right here and they can send to danlikes.crypto. So they don't need your, if someone says, hey, what's your Bitcoin address? Oh, I'm also gonna send you Ethereum, and then Zillica, and then Litecoin, and then One, and then the Tomato Coin, or whatever. You would need to give them all these different addresses. But in this situation, you just give them danlikes.crypto, and they go to all those wallets. And that's uh, the beauty of everything. All right, so that's it. So uh, thanks for sticking with me. If you've got time, we're going to do the scam of the day. And uh, it doesn't take too long. It takes about a couple minutes just to go over it, and that could really help uh, everybody out. So if you're not aware, scam of the day, in the description of every one of my videos, there's a link. It looks like this.
and it's going to link you to scam of the day. And I did this because I was sick and tired of people getting screwed out of their money, but not just that, but um, making people aware of how to avoid these scams is a big thing. Now, some of you will never fall for these scams. I mean, you're already savvy, but some are new to it. And this is like a very new, you know, world to everybody. So sometimes you got to just kick back and do a little education. So um, this is what we're going to go over. The latest one is, this was a good one. Airdrop Ethereum by Founder. Who would have thunk it? So we're going to click on the link. It's going to take us to this. So what are we looking for in a scam? Well, we're looking for, first of all, if it's a YouTube scam, we're looking for, uh, man, 53,000 views. That's a lot of views. First of all, we're looking for comments. So there's no comments. That's very strange for a 53,000 view. So right now, red flag. Uh, the second thing we're looking at, looking for is for is an asymmetrical giveaway. And it says here, rules to participate. You just need to send one Ethereum or a hundred, whichever you want to do, <laughs> two, and you'll get back two Ethereum to, or 200 Ethereum to the address. And all you got to do is scan this little QR code and off you go. Sounds so awesome, right? Well, it's not because uh, you're not special. No one's going to send you free money that doesn't work like that. So let me just tell you, treat everything like a scam until proven otherwise, and you're going to have a really much better life. Now, you don't have to take my word for it. You can just say, ah, dance full of it. So what you want to do is, you know, drop by, uh, go to the uh, Ethereum Foundation and say, hey, is Vitalik giving away free money? They'll tell you no. Uh, if you see something like with CZ Binance, uh, you can go right to Binance and go, hey, is CZ giving away free money? No. Hey, is Brad Garlinghouse from Ripple? No. He's Wherever you see it, just go to the main website and ask them. Wait 24 hours. Usually that's how long it takes. And they'll tell you no. Um, so you don't take my word for it. That's all it is. But if you verified it or you trust me, whichever, um, here's what you want to do. First of all, we're going to dislike this. This is my new one. So, so I'm going to click on, I dislike this. And then uh, to report it, all I'll do is click on these three dots. And then three dots come up, report. And we're going to say this is spam misleading. We're going to choose one. We're going to say this is a scam or fraud. And then we're going to click next. And then we're going to say, hey, this is a scam. And don't get too colorful with it. Uh, just state the facts and then off you go. And you can put as many details you want to and that's it. So hopefully uh, if you do this, this, you know, this will help out greatly to uh, get a, get this scam out of there. Especially with 53,000 views. It's, it's uh, scary to me to think how much has been lost. And if you don't think that uh, anybody would fall for this, in the very top hand corner, uh, on the scam of the day, there is a report and it talks about YouTube, get out of there. YouTube scammers help steal $130,000 in Bitcoin from investors daily. Let that sink in daily. And there is new people coming in, especially as Bitcoin comes in. You can read the report here. It's a lot of money. And 2020 has so far been the most profitable year for scammers. So if you don't think it happens, it does. Anyhow, that's it for today. If you like those types of videos, there's going to be two months going to pop up on your left and right. Don't know because I have no control of that. YouTube does at all. Just like the ads you've seen. Uh, if you saw a scam ad, that's not me. That is YouTube doing their thing. Uh, so that's all I have to say. So if you like those two more videos pop up, check those out. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next